Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Kristen Beal, President and CEO of the Kern Community Foundation. Kristen has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Kristen, for joining us. Well, today. thanks for having me very much. So the Kern Community Foundation covers a very broad area, many different communities. Talk about the footprint of the organization. Great question. Um, the Kern Community Foundation is a relatively young organization, less than 20 years old, serving the county of Kern. Now, Kern County is at the base of California's Great Central Valley. Um, a phenomenal, phenomenal geographic mass that so few people throughout our country really understand or know about. And this is really a great agricultural area. You have huge swaths of land that are dedicated to farming. You have people whose uh, towns and, and cities are dependent not only on agriculture but on other, um, uh, other industries, but there are very few people in a very large landmass. Exactly, and, and generations of ag producers. Um, the Central Valley is known as the breadbasket of America and has, has been known um, as that for, for generations. Kern County itself is 8,000 square miles um, and less than a million people. So we have communities that um, are fairly isolated, um, completely dependent upon agriculture, but Kern also is known as the second largest producing county of oil and gas. So it's a really interesting mix of ag, um, oil and gas, and now in the eastern part of the county, we're looking at sustainable energy, so wind farms and, and, and solar farms as well. So a really interesting mix, um, and the Community Foundation is, is there um, to support and to make the community a better place. Our mission is growing community, growing philanthropy. And it's interesting because in order to have the industries that you have, whether it's the energy industry on an extractive basis, the energy industry in terms of renewables or, um, or uh, in the agricultural sector, you need to have support for a workforce that is able to serve those industries. Talk about how you create the underpinnings, how your donors create the underpinnings for their own prosperity in Kern County. That's such a, that is the foundation of what we do at the Community Foundation. Um, for many, many years, um, and for the 19 years that the Community Foundation has been in existence, I would say for 16 of those years, um, it was very donor-driven. Um, donors identified where they wanted to um, place their money, and we complied. Um, Gladly, and, and we did it um, in, a, in a very, um, very positive, um, created some great energy um, within the community. But over the last three or four years, we've really said, you know, if we really are going to stand behind our mission of growing community, growing philanthropy, we need to dive in and we need to figure out how can we affect, support, create some kind of a positive disruption in the community. Um, get people to stop thinking about the status quo. Because if you look at all of the indicators, and all might be a, a little bit of an overreach, but many, many of the ed indicators, whether they're um, poverty levels, whether they're education levels, whether they're um, um, health, um, health measures, we lag. So it's very interesting. You function as a bit of a conduit, right? On, on the one hand, you have the frontline troops, the people who are providing services, who are giving you feedback. You're also receiving feedback from donors mm -hmm. who are providing the resources for many of these programs. But there is a bit of a disconnect between the two. So you're, you're trying to shape information in a way that can be consumed by the other party. Not just consumed, but uh, consumed and engaging to the other party. Um, so it's, again, a balancing act. You want people um, to look at information, um, whether it's um, data, whether it's um, just per or stories um, in the field. You want people to look at it, question it, and say, okay, this is important to me and I, I need to get engaged. How do you assure that that, that process does not end up tipping into a manipulation where it reflects the personal uh, prejudices or views or uh, priorities of, of your staff and is truly reflective of sort of a, a very good sort of information clearinghouse so that each side can 
make their decisions with with information they can trust and uh, delivered in a way that it can be trusted. So the lens that we always use, always use, and, and, and I will you know speak with staff over and over again. It's how does this impact the community, and and is it a community development issue? You look at you look at results. Can we impact. frame it? Can we frame it in a way that says? This is important, it's an Im and it's important because it's going to make our community a better place. For example, um, we're looking at um, Census 2020 coming up. We live in an area, the whole Central Valley is an undercounted set of communities. You're an undercounted community because? Because um, our residents don't necessarily understand the value of being counted. They may be afraid of being counted. 60% um, and growing of our population is uh, Hispanic Latino. Many of them um, could be residents, many of them are non-residents. Um, but it's important that they be counted. And it's, it's important that they be counted, you can look at it from two sides of the coin. From, um, from an emotional standpoint, um, from a partisan standpoint, it, it's a, a, from a it's a, it's a civic um, issue, but you could also look at it from the other side and say it re this really put all of that aside. This is about economic development here in Kern, because if we don't get the count right, that count is used to funnel federal resources, state resources, even private foundations will look at the data that's generated from that census, and they will determine the needs. Um, and, and the funding mechanisms for our area. It's really an important point because the agricultural workforce is now becoming a knowledge workforce. And if the, if the uh, skills and competencies are not embedded in that workforce, it is not as if you can instantaneously replace somebody um, who understands how to work the land with uh, somebody imported from a place like San, you know, inner city San Francisco or Los Angeles or, or whatever, where there are also uh, job issues. The people who really understand the land are here, that they understand the growing seasons, they understand how to bring uh, crops to market in a timely uh, basis, how to deal with the various afflictions that can, that can really reduce agricultural yields. But they need to remain current. They need to remain current in the technologies, in the, uh, the selection of seed, the selection of uh, pesticides. They need to really understand what is out there to ensure that this area of the world remains prosperous. And if we don't educate, if we don't invest, where does that uh, labor come from? That's a, that's a very good point. Um, and, and it's a pretty complex thing um, because if you think about um, these generations of, of families who have, their livelihood has been in the fields. They're packers and they're pickers and they maybe migrate um, up and down uh, California, whether they're in the Imperial Valley and then they come to the Central Valley and then they go up north. Families cycle through and that's what they know. When we reach out to those families and say, look, we understand that agriculture has, has been built on your backs for the most part, um, but we have opportunities to do better for your children. They say yes, but not an egg. We don't want our children to be an egg. We've done that. It doesn't, it hasn't because provided ag, for- Because ag has had a particular meaning, but what happens if you shift the meaning? That's what our role is. That's one of our roles, to shift that mindset and to say, but no, wait, let us show you let us show you that there are opportunities and there's some remarkable opportunities for your children. Great program that's just happened, um, that's been ongoing for about four years in uh, Kern County, um, taking high school freshmen, and as the, the day that they enter high school as a freshman, they also enter community college as a freshman through a very um, robust, very well supported, but very well articulated plan, we're allowing them to experience college as they're experiencing high school, dual enrollment, earning credits that both count for high school as well as college, in a supported environment, changing their self-efficacy 
so that they see themselves. These are kids that come from families that college is not a reality. So we're changing that for them. They just graduated um, the first cohort of kids um, this last weekend celebrated out of 60 students that started at one particular school. Um, 45 of them wow. graduated not only with their high school diploma, but with their AA. Uh, talk about the various civic involvement that you have that provide complementary benefits to various organizations in Kern County. Sure. So I see my role um, as um, a little bit of um, not only a spokesperson for Kern County, but also as um, a connector. And so one of the places I actually I'm, I'm two, year, two hours north um, of, of Kern is Fresno. It's the center of our Central Valley. Um, but I, I find myself up um, engaged with organizations in Fresno simply because they impact Kern and, and they play a role in Kern. One of, that, one of those organizations is Valley PBS. So I have been on the board for a couple of years now. Um, and I'm on the board for a few reasons. One is that I, I believe wholeheartedly in the mission of Valley PBS. Of public media. Oh, public media is, um, is foundational to this country. Well, it's another way to bind the community together. At the Com Current Community Foundation, you're, you're uh, acting as a type of information clearinghouse. Valley PBS is just another way of connecting the community together and sharing knowledge. And, and I agree, and I would add to it that when you live in um, communities that can be isolated and um, can, because of geography, they're fairly insular and they're disconnected. Valley PBS can transcend all of that and bring not only um, the ability for, for public, um, public information to become available, but when you think about arts, culture, science, um, think about how many, I, I would love to do a study, how many children, how many students in Kern County learned how to speak English or learned how to read through programs offered by, by Valley PBS. So I believe wholeheartedly in the mission of Valley PBS, um, but I also believe that my role um, is to serve as a connector of Valley PBS into Kern County. Their, their broadcast range reaches all the way down. And so it's important that they have a voice um, that, that represents that community. I'm so happy that you were able to give some of your experience to this program and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you for having us and allowing us the opportunity. Appreciate it. And for it. the work of the Kern Community Foundation. Thank you.